Welcome to Successfully Sustainable, the podcast all about attainable, maintainable sustainability, brought to you by our friends at Ether Herbalist and Apothecary. If you didn't know, I'm your host, I'm Brad, and I am joined today by Mr. Ellis Silverman, who is the sales lead for Okia in South Africa. Uh, Okia, branding, Um, the oat milk, uh, which I believe most of you have probably heard of. So they're a clean label barista blend oat milk. Was I mispronouncing it correctly? Not at all, not at all. Okay, mispronouncing it correctly or incorrectly? Mispronounce. Whether I'm mispronouncing it, pronouncing it incorrectly. <laughs> Anyways. Okia, Okia, Okja, okay, yeah, however. Whatever you know, works. We, we, we're very happy. Cool. You know. Well, that's a good place to be. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Good, because then I can't stuff it up too badly. No. So, yeah, I mean. Okay, yeah. Let's, okay, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's get into it. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be too uh, many of those because now it's subconsciously it's, it's in my brain. It's my life. Yeah, oh no, I can imagine. So, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a good start. How did you get started with Okia? Where did that come from? So, um, we basically got into chats um, with David. David is one of the, the brain children of, um, of this wonderful product. And um, I was chatting to him outside his cafe, which at the time was Maison J in Camps Bay. And um, I was looking for some work. I'd been down back in Cape Town for about just under six months and I'd worked a few jobs that kind of weren't really working for me and he was kind enough to share this um this this what they were actually going to be doing and I said yeah. wow this sounds like an amazing opportunity I'd love to jump in and, and and get stuck in in whichever sort of way shape or form I I can mm. and I'd never really had a, <coughs> a hard sales uh position before I was always either a bartender or uh, you know, working in hospitality. Mm. Um, that was All things that teach you how to do sales ap- really ap- well. Ap- <laughs> absolutely <laughs> agree. But it was never like door-to-door yeah. salesmen, like actually yeah. dropping in, making yeah. meetings, going to chat to people about a product. And, mm. um, you know, I think when it hit in November 2019, we launched and we landed our first batch of product. Yeah, I actually just, by talking about it, just grew more and more passionate yeah. about it and understanding more about it. You know, even something as simple as like understanding what our, our actual USB P was, yeah. You know, I think when you're a startup, there's like we were talking about branding earlier. Yeah. There's so much that you find out just by talking to people, yeah. just by getting asked the questions, yeah. people pushing up against yeah. you and saying, "Well, what about this? What about yeah, that?" Exactly. You know, and really getting into the nitty gritty yeah. and understanding, well, what is different about this product that other products don't have? Yeah. And I think as you introduced it, yeah. clean label, barista blend. That that's old news. You know, yeah. we, we we know almond breeze. Yeah. And, and uh, unsweetened and yeah. sweetened, etc. But um, I think clean label is a term that that yeah. um, a lot of people don't really understand what it is or throw it around. Yeah. Um, and I mean, for us, that means no additives. It means no thickeners, stabilizers, added sugar, which is an additive. Yeah. Uh, or anything that you basically would need to Google to understand yeah. what that is. Yeah. Um, and so, hence, we only have four ingredients um, and high oat content. Yeah. Uh, the other three are sea salts, water, and cold pressed sunflower seed oil. So there again, okay. you know, yeah. we're using something that's not just sunflower oil. Yeah, but really make sure that yeah. everything that's in it, you're getting nutrients from. Yeah, and um, yeah, cool. Good for you. Do you are you plant based, vegetarian, vegan? I was uh, mostly plant based. Okay. Um, I was vegetarian for about three years in Australia, and then um, I think I was coming back to Cape Town, and you know, biltong is. <laughs> yeah. Biltong. I think any vegetarian, South African vegetarian, will just say, you know, when I come back home, biltong. You know, uh, yeah. You, you don't have to say much more, but you know, I'm mindful of where I get my eggs, where I get, yeah. um, you know, just all my general. Yeah, even source like conscious. Yeah, just like the water, like I was saying, you know, yeah. the wonderful spring in town or Newlands, yeah. you know, just being able to use sources yeah. like that. Um, yeah, it's yeah. very important. The same can, you know, things can be said to be being sustainable, but, you know, I think it's also really important that we interrogate the things mm. that we call sustainable mm. and... Um, yeah, because you know. that that in itself, the, exactly. the term sustainable yeah. is probably... A bit of a misnomer. I, I, I actually had somebody the other day say to me, they're like, if I hear that effing word <laughs> one more time, they're like, I'm going to rip somebody's throat out. Yeah. And, and, you know, because it's like, well, yeah. everyone is like, cool, corporate social responsibility, yeah. you know, all businesses need to have their CSR. Mm. And it's like, you know, I think in when I was studying branding, that was like a uh, what, about 10 years ago, that was like a massive thing yeah. where, where, you know, you needed to understand... 
that each business had to have an element of CSR and um, well, I mean, why can't the business itself just be yeah. sustainable? Yeah. I mean, well, if you're a fishing company yeah. or a, you know, a, a butchery or yeah. a slaughterhouse, I guess some people would say that's not sustainable, yeah. but maybe there are elements of yeah. sustainability within yeah. those practices. And I think it, it's important to acknowledge that, you know, all of these things, you know, as human beings, we just have a net negative impact on the environment. So m- most of our activities or we tend, we're definitely not being good for it in the main or haven't been over the last couple of centuries. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't live, I was having this conversation literally an hour ago mm. with, with a friend and we don't live with nature. Yeah. We live in a way that's, we sort of feel we're above yeah, nature. Yeah, it's we're exploitative and totally. disconnected. So I think, you know, for people who have gone vegan into yeah. the hardcore, you know, cruelty-free kind yeah. of space, for them it's almost a way of just you know, I be- I personally believe everything's a sliding scale, and that you know you need to experience mm. both sides in order to be able to find out what moderation looks like yeah. for you as yeah. an individual. Absolutely. And I think for a lot of people, it it's going all the way to that n- nth degree, yeah, and s- and like fighting and people then about it back. <laughs> about bees yeah. and honey, and it's yeah. like, well, they're the building blocks. If we don't support them, yeah, bee farmers, yeah. how do we get beehives and yeah. more bees? And yeah oxygen and trees etc so you know there are some things that are somewhat yeah. counterintuitive and some things that make a lot of sense yeah. but i do also believe that thousands of years ago before veganism was considered a, a thing mm. you know w- there were people tribes um you know uh, aboriginal bodies um indigenous bodies that were living off the land with the land mm. you know it wasn't going off and killing seven cows yeah. a week but yeah. it was you know, yeah. so often there was a ceremonial, yeah. ritualistic um, yeah, consumption of meat. Absolutely. Before, Before we, we jump into, into the real crux of this topic, we just wanted to take a second to tell you about Ether Herbalist and Apothecary. As we move to push sustainability across the board, it's really important for us to work with and support local companies that do the same. Ether offer the widest variety of herbal and mushroom medicines in South Africa with a wide variety of uses, from improving your immune system and cognitive health to addressing many common ailments and more. From their largely locally sourced and totally vegan ingredients to their ethical and chemical grade production processes to their work to educate people around the use of natural remedies, Ether represent exactly the kind of brand that we're proud to support. They've been kind enough to give our listeners 15% off all products on their website. So if you'd like to try out some natural medicines, as well as support the show, use the code SUCCESSSUSTAIN15 at checkout on their website, etherherbalistapothecary.com, or follow the link in our bio. Back to the episode. I mean, there's, you know, neuroscience has taught us that the reason our brains evolved the way that they did was because we were cooking, eating cooked red meat. Mm. That was the extra oxygen and all of this. Like, Terence Terence McKenna might have a something else to say. Yeah, about. no, you're right. <laughs> but, anyways, a lot of <laughs> anyways. But um, you know, and our body, we're omnivores. Every animal that is similar to us, you know, all the apes are omnivores. Mm. They eat mostly plants, mm. sure, but they also consume meat. And you know, it's it's, it's like you said, and it, it's with all these things. It's like it's and especially in sustainability, people want to draw hard lines. Mm. And uh, the hard lines are, you know, some people need the hard line for discipline or whatever, but it's also in kind of what you said about the honey. is like, you know, um, my grandfather was a beekeeper mm. actually for several wow. yeah, decades. And, um, must have been so eating, eating some amazing honey. Oh, my Lord. You yeah, must be like the biggest... I'm an asshole about honey. I was honey. about to say, yeah, you must no, be the biggest honey snob. No, I'm a horrible. Totally. But, um, you know, and... I mean, we get taught, even like as kids, you get taught to be scared of bees because they might sting you. And, you know, it's like I got very comfortable as a young child with just bees being everywhere. Because whenever I went to my grandpa's house, it was just that's what was there. And, you know, then you realize they're not going to do anything to you if you don't literally piss them off. And, And then kind of realizing how incredible they are as creatures. And they are active willing participants in the production of honey it's it's what they do and Mm. um bees actually stay with hives where the beekeeper treats them well so if they don't like a hive generally the bees will just leave Mm. so 
because they get value from being in a beehive other than just the production of honey. It's not that we're stealing their food source. That's mm. like a misconception. That's not what's happening. We're not abusing the animal. The honey is largely a byproduct yeah. um, of, of their life cycle. And we're, so we're not like, you know, stealing or abusing the bees. We're actually get ri- getting rid of their waste mm. for them. And if they didn't like it, they'd sting us. Bugger off. Yeah, yeah they'd or sting or off or and then they'd leave. And they'd leave, yeah. So I, g- I guess so. So on that discussion, I guess what a lot of people have an issue with is the mass, yeah. the mass making of honey. And then I will go. I will use that argument for any industry. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Which is again like you know people going to the other side of the spectrum and abusing it. Yeah, rather than nuance and context and absolutely right uh, and moderation. Yeah, exactly. Know. And it goes kind of what you, to what you were saying as well. Like you know, there are some butchers or f- um, meat farmers. Where their system um, farming, uh, Jordan's going to kill me for not remembering this word, but it's like a eco circular okay. farming. There's a better word for it, but where you know they're farming it in a sustainable way. The animals have as much space. They're fed just on you know what they can graze. Mm. They're fed very healthily. They have plenty of space. It's not. R- it's not true like free range. Biodynamic. Biodynamic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, probably slaughter them on yeah. the full moon and yeah no exactly but it's you know where that meat is coming from a source which is to the to a large degree sustainable and mm. uh another podcast guest jordan jagger shout out <laughs> um uh like kind of went to some of these farms and he's saying you know ecologically the way that the the cattle are farmed and the way that the chickens are farmed is sustainable it it promotes diversity in uh, biodiversity in the spaces where they graze mm. those areas are so much healthier mm. than all the you know land around them and you know that's where it's like okay it's you know the blanket term of like meat farming is bad yeah. is you know broadly true in you know the context of the impact it has on the planet but there are ways that it gets done that are sustainable mm. and there are ways that certain you know, vegan produce is sourced that isn't. Oh, I would argue that the majority of vegan produce is not sourced sustainably because at the end of the day, we live in a capitalistic yeah. society where everyone wants to make money yeah. and once they have money, yeah. make more money. Yeah. So, uh, which, I mean, th- that's a bit <laughs> a bit of an odd one. Yeah. But, but I guess, look at monoculture. M- yeah. I mean, majority of the soy milk and even the almond milk and the macadamia milk that people love drinking are sourced from farms that are only producing mm. almond, macadamia, yeah. soy trees so, or b- um, the way soy goes. Um, yeah. And, and beans? Beans, yeah. Um, and so uh, there's no crop rotation. Mm. There's no um, animal fecal matter that's yeah. going back into the earth that's, you know, producing nutrients yeah. over periods of time and uh, there's no natural rhythms. Mm-hmm. And I think th- that's actually a nice thing to talk about because um, I think that's more than living with the land and living or living off the land, living with the land. We've actually lost our natural rhythm with w- with the cycles, with the seasons, with, um, you know, times, some things that like the Mayas, the yeah. Mayans and the Egyptians would have been, you know, I mean, I don't want to get too deep down, yeah. that, down that road, but like... I I, I, le- I was listening to something the other day and they were talking about exactly that, that, you know, the Gregorian calendar basically mm. keeps us consistently in this 24-hour yeah, like flow, yeah. you know, and it's we're not in tune with nature, therefore mm. we're not in tune with ourselves because yeah. as external, as internal, as yeah. above, so below. Yeah. So I would say that, you know, a lot of the vegan products, firstly, aren't produced by people with... Mm, necessarily good intentions that's not yeah. to say that they're, 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 yeah. they're ill-willed yeah. but I would say that a lot of it is also just to make money at the end of the day yeah. which is which is okay um, but I think then one as a consumer needs to be really voting with their dollar I think that's my my biggest takeaway from all of this is, is what do you spend your money on yeah. and are you giving your money your hard earned dollar rand whatever you want to call it time energy to a corporation or to a person or a business that you actually feel is doing right f- for you and the rest of the population that are you share this this world with. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I completely yeah, I completely agree with you. I think it's 
you know it, it is that it's just like don't there's no hard lines mm. Mm. we we love to find the hard totally. lines totally i mean i'd love to eat a steak and yeah. a cheesy pizza yeah keeps the gluten from time to time but yeah. if i did that every day then yeah I moderation i think and yeah exactly it kind of going back to what we were saying about you know how we used to eat meat we didn't used to eat meat twice a day every day. We used to eat meat once every two weeks when some dude got lucky with an arrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like it was like, oh, wow, yeah. this is a treat. Yeah. You know? Or, I mean, you take all the Asian populations in Vietnam, Thailand, China. They don't eat a steak and potatoes and mm. greens. They eat, I think it's like 80 grams of protein mm. and then the rest of omnivores. Yeah, you could yeah say. exactly. It's like the rest of your thing is yeah. stacked with veggies it's and not greens. and the main component. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, we'll get into like like how cooking and stuff works and, and that kind of thing and can you tell us about like the founding origin story of Okia? How did that come about? Sure. Where the, yeah. I guess like you know if 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 you're listening and you've had or the pleasure of trying any of these wonderful products. Um, you and it is a pleasure. I might add, this is definitely another one of my. This is an even more self-indulgent episode <laughs> than they usually are because uh, I mean, this is this whole podcast is just an excuse for me to talk to people yeah, that yeah. I find interesting about shit that I find interesting. Yeah. Um, Good, but then cool I was products, like, yeah. I like Orkia, so I'm gonna get in touch with them. Awesome, so, anyways, awesome. yeah, no, keep going. I'm really so stoked that you did, man. Really, really grateful to be here. Such a pleasure. Um, so <clears throat> what I was saying is that if you've ever had a leet and you're sitting there eating your Rice Krispies or your cereal or whatever you you, you use it for, um, smoothies, baking, mm. you know, white sauce, yeah. whatever, uh, and you had some time to read the, 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 the copy on the side that you'll see, we talk about the future being delicious. And you yeah. know, we say that it's not enough that the future is sustainable mm. you know it's not enough yeah. that it's you know we th those things are given we yeah. want the future to yeah. be all those things but yeah, at like obviously uh, yeah <laughs> but but at the same time i mean it needs to be delicious yeah. it needs to be something that you yeah you know that you can use in a multitude of ways yeah I mean, the hat that i'm wearing it's not 1988 is because i mean i was born in 1989 so it's not 1988 no yeah. I'm joking it's it's really because what we're saying is that well sorry let me start that over. In my phone's just vibrating. Don't worry about it. Sort it out. Um, so in 1988, there were a lot of um, milk uh, propaganda advertisements that were coming out. The the Got Milk campa campaign where oh all yeah, the famous yeah. celebrities had like a you know the back of Mad magazines yeah. and um, all all that kind of stuff was around that time. I mean, the milk dairy milk industry has been subsidized since World War One. That's mm. a, you can find that on wikipedia yeah. but um i think for us what we we're trying to say is that you know dairy is the wrong side of change yeah regardless of you know whether it's sustainable or not yeah. like small dairy farmers uh people making butter with those products those kinds of things shout out to cream of the crop uh maria she's doing amazing things like that okay um culturing her buttermilk for 24 hours with kefir grains and making like probiotic rich the best butter you've ever tasted in your life she also makes vegan butter with Okia. But, um, you know, besides that kind of space, we're saying that, you know, dairy and that kind of mass produced anything is really the wrong side of change. Yeah. And um, so it's not enough to be sustainable. It's not enough to be making changes. You know, it's got to be a smooth transition. So our whole vision is really about helping people on a journey towards a more plant li plant based life or more um a life that basically is is kinder to the planet yeah. but that doesn't um take away your comforts doesn't yeah. take away your you know enjoyment your enjoyment i mean y i think people who drink almond milk and their coffee today are just so fed up with all the different milks that they had to try to mm. get to almond yeah. milk that when you suggest oat milk they actually go they're like i'm so tired i, I don't want to try <laughs> your oat milk because <laughs> I've tried all these other things. I finally got to something yeah. that's okay. I don't love yeah. it, but it's okay in my coffee, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, and I'm like, just just try one more yeah. and this will take your okay from a, like, oh my gosh, this is actually pleasurable. Yeah. I drink my coffee black. When I have an oatmeal cappuccino, it's like I'm drinking a hot chocolate. I'm yeah. Like, this is so like rich. <laughs> so good. Like, yeah. it's, it's a decadent. It's yeah. a it tastes like a treat. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what did I do to deserve yeah. this? <laughs> that's why I've always preferred oat milk over other like plant based milks. There's like there's I don't know how to describe it, but the like the richness and the, mm. uh, the body, the, yeah, the body. That's a that's a good way of putting it. Is just and there is a taste to it that's of its own, which you kind of 
that's just really nice, but yeah. it's not sweet. It's not. It's just. And, nah. and you know what? For me, there's there are oat milk brands out there that mimic dairy mm. much more similarly yeah. to ours. I would say an oat will mimic yeah. dairy far yeah. more similarly than a nut because nuts are yeah. inherently acidic. Oats yeah. are alkaline in, yeah. in texture; they're neutral yeah. in flavor. But there are other brands out there that use certain things to make the milk taste like dairy. Mm. Uh, not necessarily taste, but m- much more on the neutral side. Yeah. For me. I don't know what I'm drinking then. Yeah. Then I may as well be drinking dairy yeah. milk. You know, it's this to me, for me, actually yeah. tastes like an oat milk. Yeah. And I, yeah, uh, I like it. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had the funniest reactions from some baristas who are like, you know, they're like, what? Another milk you're bringing me? And mm. they're like, I'm like, please taste. They're like, no, no, no. I, I can't drink these things. And mm. I'm like, taste it. And then they taste like, wow, it's delicious. Tastes like oats. And I'm yeah. like, what, what did you yeah. expect it to taste yeah. like? Uh, no, as if. Rooibos tea. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I mean, so. Yeah, it came from you were saying yeah. So um, yeah, the uh, I suppose Dave, um, and Rui, his his partner, they've been in coffee for for many many years. Okay. Um, they actually started Vida Cafe about we're almost on twenty years now. Dave's gonna probably shoot me for that one, but maybe it's seventeen. Um, so they were the original founders of okay. that, and both of them went off to their own um, sort of businesses thereafter. And um, I think they reconnected and and had this idea of you know bringing something like you know Oatly is obviously the, the I was going to say Oatly is where I got introduced. Uh, I mean, to well, it okay. is. You know, every South African that has yeah. been on a gap year, fortunate enough to have gone over to Berlin or or New okay. York or London, you know, you've you've tried that. Oatly barista. Oatly grey barista, you know, and in your coffee and you're like, wow, this is like dairy, but not. And I feel good because I'm healthy and I'm mm. saving the planet and all yeah. that. So I guess we, this was kind of in response to that and, and, and trying to bring our own products into, I mean, this uh, we are very much a South African yeah. company. Um, we produce in Italy because there's three factories in the world that are capable of producing to our spec. So uh, that sure. have the technology. Okay. Actually. Um, which is without any of the additives mm. and things. I mean, you know, just a one for one. Oatly has five extra ingredients that we don't use. Pow, <laughs> pow, 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 pow. <laughs> so um, we also use sixty percent more oats. Ah, um, another one. <laughs> another reason why you should <laughs> jokes. Um, but no, in all honesty, I th- I think um, it, whilst we'd love to produce locally mm. um it's a very expensive operation yeah. there are guys doing it but again they've got additives they've got things it's 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 not what we're about we we are really yeah. sticking to that clean label um notion of you know what you put in is what you get out really yeah. um so um so yeah we got rolling november 2019 i hit the road and started doing all the sales and you know, literally just... So you've been involved <coughs> kind of from the outset. Y- yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, not in the actual design of the yeah. box or the branding. Um, uh, that's... Uh, the copy is all Rui. Um, we have a wonderful in-house designer um, who did all the branding for us. Um, let me... Re- can I retake that one yeah. again? Um, we have a wonderful in-house designer, Sam Yule, uh, who's done all the design on these funky um, boxes for us and um, all the future products that we will be bringing out. Um, so, yeah, we're super, super fortunate to have her on our team and to, you know, I think that's, that's the one thing that people always say. Uh, w- they're like, we love it in our shop because, you know, it creates such mm. an effect when yeah. you have six to ten liters, yeah. uh, like a wall of oat milk. And um, it really speaks to South Africans, yeah. you know, whether, whether you're in Bloemfontein yeah. or Cape Town, you know, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it, it's definitely a very unique visual and even within the, like, the sustainability space where often it's so, like, you know, the aesthetic is either, like, very uh, greeny, earthy mm. tones mm. or, like, very white and clean to, like, you know, something like yeah. that. And I like that it's, like, you'll walk into one of these cafes and there's all, like, hanging plants and all that edgy old people kid shit um you know it's hanging plants and it's all white and exposed wood and then it's just like boom okay well i know where the orchid is yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's the only color in yeah, the entire cuts, place cuts through yeah, yeah. absolutely and a good business decision if nothing else yeah um definitely yeah sets, sets it apart yeah i mean but, but i mean also back to the yeah, back to veganism i mean it is it is also a bit of a nod all our products in one way or another are a nod to some kind of cultural 
uh, icon mm. or phenomenon. Uh, I mean, Akio is the the name of that movie about mm. the super pig that um, you know needs very little to feed and it excretes very little and it has all this meat. And you know, uh, have you seen the movie? I've tell you've seen I might it on have done Netflix. When I was yeah, very was young. Recommend, yeah, yeah. recommended to you on Netflix. Yeah. Um, it's uh, so so. Th- it's a little nod to that. Even the liter latte um, is, an, is a bit of a nod to, uh, and, and P.S. This is the first time this has been put out on public knowledge. So um, exclusive, a exclu- little exclusive info, insider info, uh, just the scoop. Um, uh, Super Troopers. Oh uh, right. So I don't know if you remember that episode, uh, that section. <laughs> Don't know if you remember that uh, little segment with Officer Farva and he's ordering uh, some yeah, burgers yes. and he's like he's like would that be all officer and he's like he's like yeah I'll have a liter of cola and the guy's like what's a liter of cola he's like liter is French for give me some goddamn freaking cola yeah and so that's our little, you little know, just pop pl- culture yeah, references just a little bit of fun you know liter the of kids liter, yeah liter of latte yeah. yeah yeah I mean you you kind of mentioned how it was important for you guys to that you know it's not only that the future's got to be sustainable but it's got to be delicious mm-hmm. and you know I've c- similar sentiments have come out with with different people as well where it's like you know it's not only sustainable it's got to be mm-hmm. tasty and mm-hmm. enjoyable and, and I think that's that's also really important to be including as a part of this conversation is that you know it's not that going plant based or living a more sustainable lifestyle or any of that is like this massive drag mm. on your life. Totally, or expense. Or ex- yeah, and we'll get we'll definitely get into expense side because that's also such an important <laughs> part of the conversation. But you know, it's like, sh- and that's why the podcast is called Successfully Sustainable. Shout out to my cousin Sam for helping with the name. Um, he uh, the marketing branding uh, guy. He was brilliant, and he only works with sustainable brands. Cool. But anyways. Um, that it, you know, we've got to show people that, you know, how to be successfully sustainable. And that's why we're talking to businesses that have managed to make a successful business that is also sustainable because it's really important from, you know, that's got to be actually a key part of this whole journey, especially yeah. from an entrepreneurial perspective, because if we don't build companies that can provide all of these services, these alternative offerings to maybe less sustainable options if they're not successful as businesses mm. because you it know doesn't make sense in our yeah. current climate exactly you know. like we can you know hope <laughs> for a world where everything's socialist and we can you know figure it all out yeah. but realistically in I today's day and age give you the coconut yeah. you give me the yeah. fish <laughs> right now it has to be that these businesses and the lifestyle that they exude you know it's it's possible to be successful it's not like okay you're just making it through mm. it's got to be enjoyable it's yeah. got to be tasty it's got to be desirable and mm. you know the more one finds out about the whole kind of scene around sustainability, the more you discover how possible and doable and Mm. existent those things are. But, you know, for people who aren't as exposed to media and insight and people who, who, you know, live a more sustainable lifestyle, you don't see that. And that's why it's really important to, for me to be having the conversation around, Mm. yeah, okay, sustainable's, like sustainable's the bottom line what are we you know what's being built on top of that to make it more than just that because yeah sustainable but it's got to be a desirable product absolutely um yeah and i think that's just go for it no i was gonna say and and there are there's tons of people that are doing amazing things um you know exactly like that starting from the ground up and 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 working yeah i'll give Maria, another little shout yeah. out. Like her whole dream is to have a farm with a whole bunch of cows, and you know, treat them the way she sees fit, which is I'm pretty sure a lot better than a lot of other yeah. dairy farmers, and m- make this amazing butter. Yeah. You know? And um, uh, you know, for her, that's sh- she was saying. You know, okay, it might not be vegan, it might not be plant based, but there are millions of people who would like mm. this kind of a product. But at the moment, it's super expensive because yeah. she's sourcing her buttermilk, etc. Yeah. So her her trajectory is, you know, bringing the price yeah. down ultimately yeah. and creating this super super premium product, you know, at eventually a price that's affordable, yeah. f- you know, and then is, is is seen as a better lure pack. I mean, yeah, I mean, it puts lure pack to shame. If yeah. you <laughs> eat lure pack, please just save some cents and go buy cream of the crop butter. But um, 
Sealand, uh, yeah. Bags, yeah. you know, also doing amazing things. Um, uh, Happy Culture Kombucha transitioning into cans. Um, we've got, um, you know, a whole bunch of like amazing local brands that are that are really pushing. Yeah. Um, for for these cleaner options. Yeah, we are super lucky in in South Africa, but I think in Cape Town in general. Yeah. That like the culture has just evolved to a very kind of natural integration of these alternative cleaner options within the kind of very much within the public main mm. that are sustainable and clean and locally sourced and you know employing lots of local people and all of those things and there's so much variety mm. that like you might not like one you know local vegan restaurant but literally around the corner there'll be another one yeah so go try them and then you might have to go a little bit further but there's just such a we're so blessed with that wealth of of you know different options mm. and um and the food is and the, like it's a in incredibly high quality mm. like you know this stuff is not you know it's of international standard totally and i mean e even if you go to a, a non vegan mm. restaurant yeah. they will more than likely yeah, have, have organic ve vegetarian ones and yeah. well, vegetarian options even, yeah. you know and those will be on yeah you know, like you say, on that international. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So there's no, there's no secret that our food is is yeah. phenomenal. Um, a service we got to work on a little bit. Yeah, but hey, <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that's it's so important that, that that's the yeah, and like you said that, and kind of links up to what you were saying about the um, what you were saying about Maria is that I think it's also really important to be having that discussion, not that like. You know, because there has to be a middle ground and helping people, you know, helping to meet people where they're at. Mm. That some people might not be ready to switch to a vegan butter. Totally, and yeah. There's price implications to that. And there's, like, taste preference. Uh, some people might, you know. But, and it goes to what you were saying about sauce. And uh, Jordan w mentioning about sauce is like, okay, cool. So you don't want to go vegetarian or vegan or plant-based in this way. Cool. Without doing that there's still ways to change your behavior mm. that will have a more positive impact on, on the, the planet. Yeah, on the whole. And that doesn't mean you have to go vegan tomorrow, you know? It's a process, and there are so many different ways mm. that we can I change mean, our behavior. I mean, even like composting, if you're mm. fortunate to have a small garden, or even if you live in an apartment, I mean, yeah. there's a garden, you know, you can keep your off cuttings and all your trimmings which by the way you could use for soups and yeah. stocks um and then still compost them yeah. afterwards there's you know uh getting uh, like li bin lineless yeah uh, lineless bin bag yeah bins without lineless, lineless bins yeah you know less plastic yeah like all those kinds of things you know taking those bottles from nourish that you've stacked up in your <laughs> cupboard back to <laughs> nourished and you know, letting them yeah. reuse that glass, get your money back. Yeah, um, you know <laughs> exactly. I believe Tash was on here. Yesterday, yeah, Tash so was on yesterday. There you go, Tash. Also, great vibes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Great products. Yeah, shout out to Nourish and oh go yeah, and get always. some food. Um, but yeah, it's it's that you know, there's all these different ways, and you know, you don't have to be vegan or vegetarian to drink oat milk. Absolutely not. I would og. I personally prefer it. Man. And I still drink dairy milk. Brad, I, I, well, that, that I don't know how you do because I physically cannot digest dairy milk. <laughs> I, I think the lactose is just so freely available that it just yeah. out your body. <laughs> but um, but that cultured butter, for instance, yeah. like it, it's the virtually 99% of the lactose has been eaten by the probiotics yeah. and then they excrete, sorry, they excrete uh, probiotics, yeah. um, the bacteria. So um, I think... Oh, that's what I was going to say. The, uh, at the Okia Cafe, yeah. you're saying you don't have to be vegan to yeah. drink plant-based milks. At our cafe, we have a range of, you know, early morning swimmers who are between 17, 18 and yeah. 74. Yeah. They come there and after their ice cold immersion, get into the cafe and they order their oat or their macadamia or whatever they want. But we don't serve dairy milk. Yeah. So now you see, you <laughs> I've seen it many a time where somebody brings their friend there yeah. and they're cool to uh, cappuccinos and the friend get, drinks the first sip of their cappuccino and they're like, oh, this is nice, but it tastes a bit different, but it's really nice. I'm really enjoying this. And I'm like, oh, what did you go? Oat. And he's like, no, 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 dairy, just regular. I'm like, well, <laughs> no, regular is. <laughs> uh, I'm like, well, we don't actually serve dairy here. So, you know, you can't be in the guy's yeah. like, what do you mean? This is not dairy milk. And it's like, you drink yeah. oat milk and they're like, 
no way. It's like yeah. I, I ordered a regular cappuccino. I'm like, <laughs> like yeah, regular, regular. Is, yeah, this is, is how it comes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you don't specify. Yeah. But um, but the point is, like, every morning I'm there and I s- watch these 72 year olds or the couples that don't even swim come walk their yeah. dogs and feed the dog a little biscuit and drinking their cappuccino like it's back in the day. Yeah. Like, there's nothing different about it for yeah. them. This is this is yeah. the norm and. And I think, um, you know, I've also surprised some baristas and, and people as well, who or chefs as well, who, mm. who are like, wow, you can do this with it, you can do that with it. I mean, I don't call it a milk alternative. It's, yeah. a, it's a milk replacement. Okay. It's yeah. So, I mean, uh, that's also something I wanted to touch on at some point. Like, can you cook with it absolutely. like you would other milk? I mean, we have about six um, ice cream Marie's ice creamers, ice cream makers. Oh, really? Who make ice cream from it. We've got Maria making butter from it. We've got... Um, uh, but four different bakeries nationally that bake with it. Um, I mean, Jason's Bakery, for instance, uses Maria's vegan butter made from Akia okay. to make his vegan croissants, which I personally prefer to his regular croissants as much as I love butter. But wow, it's um, it's a phenomenally versatile product. I made a mac and cheese with some yeah. greens and things last night, and I actually used from I used butter and flour for my yeah. roux, and then I don't have dairy milk in my fridge yeah. so i just went okay and i've had a few chefs actually say to me they prefer like a white sauce with okay they said it's actually got way more depth of flavor yeah. and i mean i would imagine so because yeah it's, it's that depth we were talking about yeah. but um yeah i mean let's start <laughs> wrapping things up so we can because then it'll fit quite nicely actually cool. within a conventional time frame mm. and i won't have to edit much I mean, yeah, I, we've already done a couple of shout outs to different people and mm. you've you know, shouted out a few people who, who are doing some really incredible work. Is there anyone else off the top of your head that you want to give a shout out to or um, partners? Yeah, well, like I was saying, uh, a buddy of mine is, is, is um, kombucha, yeah. um, happy culture kombucha. And they, they're really, so nice. yeah, it's honestly my favorite. I mean, they, that's proper kombucha. Yeah. They don't yeah. carbonate it or anything. Yeah, proper. it's just fermentation and um also yeah move into cans they're doing zero sugar um he's found this amazing kind of like substitute instead of using sugar and you know so it's better for your body obviously mm. <coughs> i think the way that they source all their actual ingredients and flavors and things is is pretty amazing as well um i don't know if you know grumpy and runt it's <laughs> grumpy yes. and runt. Grumpy, uh, I mean, grumpy and runs great vegan donuts yeah joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah also good homies and um, phenomenal donuts if you're looking for a vegan donut and you've never been to that place well you're in for a surprise okay. and a serious treat yeah um and an insulin spike too <laughs> good because <laughs> you know who doesn't love the dopamine yeah um <laughs> the dopamine and um grumpy snacks is okay. actually who i was i was alluding to uh the chickpea snacks Those i think i've actually seen some stuff they actually. are sensational they've just sourced this new chickpea that's like double the size of a normal chickpea and oh it's okay, also nice. really good clean clean logistical source for that as well and um yeah that's that's an amazing product they're also just a c- amazing couple that started that you know just as a way to 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 give back to mm. like a healthy snack that yeah. you know, people can i think their whole story is also it's like they were on the run yeah the girlfriend was getting upset all the time boyfriend's like well i need something to give you to <laughs> snack on <laughs> stop just the hangry yeah, <laughs> yeah stop the hangry you know just halt the hangry and uh think he got into he was actually an engineer and he got into you know reverse engineering a, yeah. a, a snack of sorts and uh, and it was born i mean their chocolate ones are phenomenal and um he actually makes <laughs> for me a salt and vinegar grumpy snack like a very really nice strong. custom and so i mix the salt and vinegar ones with the chocolate ones and that's just like the biggest most dangerous yeah, because then snack. you're getting everything. Wild. Sodium Salty, and sugar sweet. and yeah, everything. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, and Sealand, um, you know, their products yeah. are also amazing. Um, you know. Yeah, no, they're smashing it as well. Um, is there anything exciting upcoming for Okia? We do. We've got a couple of new, very exciting products. Um, one I can maybe talk about. The others I cannot. Still super secret. Uh, yeah, okay. Very, very secret. Um, <laughs> you know, it's fine. We'll have you back in time for that one, That'd and then we can awesome. shout that one yeah, out. And we can taste. We can do all, all the things. That um, but yeah, we're actually releasing all these friends in a little 200 mil 
um, size serving. So it's going to be oh, amazing for cool. lunch boxes on the go. Hopefully they'll be in all the fridges and all the engines and you can just grab one out. Um, and I mean, if, if people just, we haven't actually spoken about any of the products mm, themselves. Let's do it. So the Akia Barista Blend is just our plain barista blend, which is what you would add to your coffee or tea or bake with, or et cetera. The liter latte is the same recipe as the oat milk. So it's a barista blend oat yeah. milk with the addition of actual espresso into that. Uh, so a lot of people confu- a bit confused about that. They're like, liter or latte, what is it? Well, it's a liter of cafe latte. And if you put wild. coffee in that, like you foam that up and then you, I've heard people putting extra coffee, like the Nespresso f- machine in the morning, they froth that up, they add a shot of their Nespresso and they're like, dude, I was flying. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like that's imagine. not the barista blend. <laughs> it's, it's not milk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's caffeinated. Re- yeah, you're ready to drink. But but yeah, real coffee. So And then also the beans that we source are Rainforest Alliance certified. Okay. The same with our Just Now Cacao. Um, obviously a little South African nod to the now, now, just now, you know, do it right now. Um, also Rainforest Alliance certified raw cacao, um, which obviously has all the nutritional, Mm. maintains all the nutritional benefits of the cacao, um, berry. And, um, that's like a healthy, steady, stumpy in a liter. Amazing. um, yeah, I've I've had friends I've given that to. They're like, yeah, I got on the couch and poured myself a glass and then went back to the fridge and took the whole bottle. Yeah, because, like, yeah, that becomes a dangerous yeah. one, that. Somebody said you need to conjure a long enough straw so that you can actually yeah. drink out of it. Like, Oh, God, that yeah. would be like, like yes, but also like, no, no for my the no, sake no, of my yeah. health, no. But <laughs> like, that sounds really good. Yeah. By the way, these are all yours. Oh, amazing. Well, Thank you. So Appreciate it. They'll, they'll be used for anyone else who comes in fantastic. for a, a podcast or a session. Awesome. We'll get to use uh, some be caffeinated, hydrated, proper, yeah. um, nutrified. Listen, we provide a all-round package Absolutely. here. Amazing. All right. Um, your last, uh, do you want to go no, for No, I think there was one point on your um, list about how um, how Akia is contributing to um, sustainable Yes, let's go into solutions. Oh, I just think, I think, uh, you know, we were talking about sustainable drives in mm. businesses like we still yeah. spoke about CSR earlier. I think for, for us, it's, it's creating products that are not derived from plant, uh, not derived from animal, yeah, uh, from animals, yeah, really, and it's 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 creating um, not only milks but a whole range of products yeah. that can fit into the marketplace um, as replacements for their predecessors. Yeah, and <coughs> I use the word predecessor mm. because they really are. I, I think in ten years' time there's going to be such a massive shift that people mm. can't even imagine. Um, well, I'm hoping anyway. Yeah. Um, and, um, and these will be the, 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 the new norm. You yeah. Know, everyone's like, oh. I really like the, the use of predecessor because mm. I, I completely agree. I think, and I think we can see it happening and mm. it's just, you know, it's not some takeover. It, it just seems like a fairly natural evolution of the way we eat. And uh, pro- I think progression. It'll, yeah, more. progression. Exactly. Yeah. It's progress. And, you know, that I think over time, these things, you'll just have so much more variety mm. of plant based milks. And, and then it'll get to a point where the production quality is excellent and the taste is excellent kind of across the board. Mm. And then everyone's going, why am I going to use dairy milk? Which just like is that. When I can have, you know, a substitute, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I can have a substitute, which then is, you know, gives me a macadamia flavor or a OT flavor, mm. you know, where that becomes, you know, a, an added benefit to the, and it's just going to become so much more part of our lives. And mm. why, as you said, like the non-vegetarian or plant-based restaurants are now incorporating more and more vegetarians just because a, they clearly, you know, we know companies don't make any decisions unless there's demand for it. Sure. And so clearly, more and more people are going into those restaurants and saying, what do you have that's vegetarian? Mm-hmm. And then complaining that there's only two vegetarian things on the menu. And then these places evolve. Yeah. And I think that's just going to, you know, continue to to happen. And I think for chefs as well, it starts, even guys who are, you know, come from a meat basis, mm. start going, oh, there's all these cool techniques mm, and food stuffs that I've to, never yeah, played with. Yeah wow this is exciting yeah. i've done all the stuff i can with a steak yeah you know uh, just just uh, on your point about um consumer demand yeah i think there, you know, there are two 
very clean cut schools of thought. One is um, wait for the customer to ask for yeah. it, and the other is lead the way. Yeah. And I think that's what that's yeah. actually what's at our core. Absolutely. Yeah. Is we we're not trying to be an Oatly. We're not trying to be uh, minor figures. We're not trying yeah. to be any of these other oat milks. Akia is yeah. completely different by virtue of the fact that we don't use all those yeah. other ingredients that you know that is the next step yeah. in sustainability it's the next is level yeah it, it really is like you know if you're putting you know all those wonderful numbers and yeah. even things that you don't recognize in your body well i mean that's okay yeah for now yeah exactly <laughs> but long term it might have some yeah. effects and what we're saying is we're not mm. we, we don't want you to put these yeah. things in your body which is why we're creating a product and putting it on the shelf there for you mm. um of course, everyone has different yeah. uh, taste preferences and profiles that they prefer. And in the 12 oat milks that we're lucky enough to have in Cape Town, for yeah. sure, there's going to be yeah. you know, people choosing one over the other because that's just yeah, that's the way just that the way their mouth the is the interpreting it. But mm. yeah, and I, I like what you said about, you know, that they're, A, the Rocky has its own kind of, it's not just copying an established whatever, that it's forging its own way. And Mm. absolutely, there's like leadership in the market. And then there's, um, you know, it is is the old, you know, the more conventional, you know, in in the sense of food and on meat, non-vegetarian restaurants would be the conservative side of things, Mm. which will respond to market pressure because of market, you know, openings created from the more like, uh, li- liberal in the food perspective, <laughs> you know, <laughs> side of the spectrum where you have vegetarian and vegan restaurants pushing the pushing the envelope, and then other places have to, you know, sure. come up the back end. But <laughs> um, you know that. Sorry. That was yeah, a little bit <laughs> sus, but anyway, <laughs> with a Good Freudian thing. slip. Couldn't let it slide, um, sorry. <laughs> but you know that. Yeah, I think it is important that you know that it's conscious sustainability mm. and it's. Because one can as easily think you're being sustainable and buy quinoa. And quinoa's farming is generally not at all. It's, you know, it has hugely detrimental social socioeconomic mm. effects in, you know, Peru and stuff. So, you know, there's, it's easy to just look at something that says vegan and go, okay, vegan equals good. But, you know, as we've discussed, that's not always true. Absolutely. And it's far more important to be educated if you're going to be educated and then make an educated decision to continue to eat meat because you're getting it from X, Y, Z, completely respect that. Absolutely. Yeah. Incredible, cool, like you've done the due diligence, amazing. If you, you know, and on the flip side, if you're someone who thinks they're being vegan but is just buying anything that says vegan on it, mm. you could be having a more negative impact, unknowingly, absolutely, than someone who's consciously deciding to eat a little bit of meat because they know where they're getting it, or Absolutely, you know, yeah. or you just you think you're being vegan, but you throw all your plastic away. Like mm. you know, be more. I think consciousness is yeah. ultimately what it all comes down mm. to, and mm. making a conscious decision. And then once you made a conscious, educated decision, you know, that's amazing. Yeah. I fully support that. Yeah, and I think unfortunately a lot of people will also slander things that they haven't fully read up about mm, or, or have read up about and, and, and sure maybe just misinformed i mean i was reading the other day about um tetra pack and the recyclability mm. and and the sort of myth bust but but myth busted busted myths around tetra pack mm. and i mean it is it's it's 100 percent recyclable yeah everything there's it's 75 percent paperboard i think 20 percent um polyethylene and uh, 5% aluminium. And when these go to the Tetra Pak Recycle Depots, they actually pull apart all these pieces and reuse them, repurpose. Some gets recycled, some gets repurposed. The aluminium gets used for like roofing. R- roofing. 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 Uh, <laughs> roofing. Um, and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's generally thought of as like the least... Um, sustainable but i mean it's actually one of the lightest and uh, less impactful on the carbon emission side of 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 this conversation um it's uh so so you know we we also try on 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 Mm. that perspective it's not just like a thoughtless impromptu everyone's in tetra pack going to tetra pack it's it's like no this is a a really thought out 
kind of um, conclusion or decision yeah. to make. Yeah, it was a decision we evaluated and then took. Yeah, you know, and then not and like then oh, I'm going vegan. Cool. What do I eat? Sandwiches and pasta. You yeah, know? it's like mm, yeah, exactly. Take your time. Yeah, on the journey. Investigate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take it slowly. I mean, yeah, th- th- the like wrapping up things are a. You have a moment to monologue about anything you want to tell the the interwebs um but also just like yeah if you've got any small small tips implementations Mm. basic little things from your experience personally whatever that people can do to lead a slightly more sustainable lifestyle Mm. let's hear them so i mean i i cook a lot i think um you know cooking is a really great way of getting in touch with your food like literally touching Mm. it and 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 also getting in touch with your body because you know you might think that you feel like a pizza for dinner and you just get onto the web and you order one out but i think by taking five minutes ten minutes to reevaluate what your body actually needs sometimes you're like whoa actually i feel like a bowl of greens Mm. or you know i do feel like that pizza Mm. and and then cool by all means go order it but i think cooking is a great way of firstly monitoring your usage as to where you're buying what from and um you know then uh, it comes up the conversation of time and and all that which is 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 definitely a A valid a a valid a valid thing i think it's also about preparation i mean i've been cooking for ages so i can quickly whip something Mm. up you know that might take someone a bit longer but um i think (coughs) uh at, at least you know buying things from you know good sources not necessarily it doesn't mean Woolworths mm. or you know yeah. checkers might have some really great yeah. things you know I'm not all about necessarily organic because yeah. uh, I think that's a bit of a you know a fine line to to dance around mm. as well um especially in South Africa yeah. where we we don't have a body that actually yeah it's an unregu- it's another unregulated <coughs> term exactly so or you pay a yeah buttload of money for somebody to come to your farm to sign something off that says you're now an organic yeah. farm um however i think um th- small things like not buying bottled water buy a 25 liter water canister from mambo's or any plastic packaging shop and go to newlands and fill that up with delicious Mm, spring water spring water that's been filtered through you know tons and tons of rocks and or there's another um, spring in tambos um um, one in cork bay (coughs) as well if you live in the deep Uh, south that's that's it um i mean i guess i guess really just critically analyzing (laughs) this is this is a very scorpio thing critically analyzing everything you Mm. do but but no really like why you decide to consume something and i think going back to that idea that i spoke about about voting with your dollar yeah it was something that 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 i always found quite profound because it's so useful it's yeah. like it's like do i support what these people are doing uh yes great you take my money yeah you know, um is it just something that i mm. want to fulfill my own satisfactory uh gain f- gains you know is it for my own gain um well yes and i don't do this often then great take my money but if yeah. it's like this is something that's you just leading yeah. money down a bottomless pit then you know um why why um so keep it sustainable kids yeah and ask yourself those questions like just ask and yeah. then you might find an interesting answer and um yeah i think we just generally need to be a bit more self interrogative and interrogative i was yeah, told yeah. i was pronouncing that wrong but you know just be a, a bit more aware of of why we do the things we do and mm. not necessarily implying judgment on what that is but just understand why you do it um yeah this will be your monologue moment i'm going to get up and make sure the camera's there also because people otherwise look at me and i want you to look at the camera uh, but do not shoot from different angles really no i just, just rather days. keep it simple uh that one will obviously keep what recording am I, what am I monologuing on? whatever you want whatever you think people need to know about anything if something has been burning on your mind it doesn't have to be long it can be a brand pitch it can be <coughs> um Gee, my monologue moment. I think something that's particularly I'm passionate about, um, which admittedly I don't do enough work around, um, you know, externally, um, but is is litter. I think littering is something that has been, again, we we're quite removed from 
the source of things. And I think that maybe it is a primal instinct to eat something and just drop it on the floor because nature will do the rest. But that being said, we don't live in that kind of way where, you know, you can eat a piece of meat off the bone and drop it. And, you know, we do live in cities with concrete. And I think that to make the space that we live in more beautiful, more mindful, more, um, I'm going to start that again. Um, I think to make the space, the communal spaces that we live in more beautiful, more practical, um, and, and (laughs) quite frankly, to have a lot less work, um, you know, we can, start small things by start with small things by like littering in a bin putting your litter in a bin putting your trash in a bin not spitting your gum out if you smoke cigarettes actually putting your cigarette butt in a bin um the small things and this goes back to i suppose just being aware of why we as people decide to do certain things critically analyze your own decisions um you know if you're smoking that cigarette and you're coming to the end and you're like just have that second thought of like where do i put this uh have a look take that extra moment to actually go find a bin find an ashtray probably won't be far off and um, you'll make everyone's lives a lot more pleasant and beautiful and um just make this world a better place to live in for all that was a good monologue thanks important stuff um yeah i mean we'll wrap things up properly now but a really really nice phrase that i think i've been quoting jordan a lot in this episode it's weird i always quote different people with different episodes but um he said something that he'd heard from someone once that just resonated with him as kind of a mantra was um i think it came from like kind of a, a yogic perspective but um someone had talked to him about they were just changing the way they used words and making verbs out of nouns and Mm. used the phrase mothering earth Mm. instead of mother earth Mm. and to that we also have a responsible to mother earth Mm. and look after earth in that sense it's not just mother earth we need to mother earth as well well i think a lot of people will have different reasons as to why they believe that we are here Mm. in the first place Mm. i mean my view on that is that we are custodians of this space that we've been given um you know that's not the sole purpose but yeah one of it's one of our roles one yeah. of our roles is that we are custodians uh whether you like it or not and mm. i think to litter is yeah. like a direct opposing of yeah. that view and it's it's kind of i mean it we we know that the seas are full of rubbish we know that i mean if you've ever been up to the trans sky or those areas i mean it's just unbelievable yeah. how you have this juxtaposition it's almost like it should be an artwork yeah it's green and lush mountain with this fence and like mm. kilos of yeah. plastic pushed up against yeah. the fence you know like it's uh it's it's heartbreaking and mm. i mean if anyone can look at that and actually say like that's okay well yeah i mean uh, check that out uh, yeah ask that why question yeah, as to check, why check you think that. yourself so so yeah, I do. I, I think that's a, a a really strong thing for me, mm. um, or something that I value is, yeah. is you know when people do take care of yeah. their spaces, yeah. and, and maybe it also starts at home. You know, yeah, maybe absolutely. it starts with just all of this, all the sustainability yeah. stuff. Even if you're wanting to create a sustainable bili- business, it's yeah. like, well, how do you operate at home? Are yeah. you do you recycle? Do it on a small scale. Yeah. Do you um you know put things in the right trash cans yeah. or? Um, or, you know. Yeah, baby steps. It's mm. a process. It's mm. it's all a process, and you know it is about taking the baby steps to, you know, evolve into a you know a higher version of yourself. And however long that takes you, and why and what you decide to do is up to you. And you know best as to what will work best for you. But you know, start engaging in in that journey and mm. take your time and do it the way you want to do. But yeah, I think that was a that was that a great, was that great was a, good uh, a nice little ending segue. Little yeah, um, encompassing. Yeah, of, of it all. Yeah. yeah, that's a good promo clip. That. To um, I definitely yeah. Think so, yeah. Um. So firstly, thank you so much for coming through and chatting to me, and yeah, imparting your knowledge and wisdom. I've I've really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much 
for the oat milk, oh, which yes. I'm going to consume probably far too fast. But anyways, that's <laughs> awesome. a good problem awesome. to have. We'll just give me a shout. We'll come drop some. Oh, amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, we will regularly be stocking Orkia. So if you come in for a session... I'm not buying. I'm not buying dairy milk anymore. I've just made the decision, and Cut. we're not doing it. So circle, and well, you won't circle because this stuff is better. Anyways, thank you so much for Thanks coming bro. through. Thanks really to Orkia in general. Awesome. Thanks, uh, bro. I really appreciate the time. And dude, absolutely chatting pleasure. And yeah, I'm, I'm I'm grateful for for all the opportunities that we've been given. Thank to you to bring this wonderful uh, product product to the people yeah mm. and yeah to those of you who have been listening thank you for watching depending on what you're doing thank you so much for taking the time to also be a part of the conversation because you too are a part of this conversation Absolutely. and um, it's an ongoing conversation that we're all a part of and we'd love for you to engage with it and as Tash said yesterday actually the fact that you're here and listening regardless of whatever else you've done is indicative that you are taking part and you are participating and you are intrigued about learning to live a more sustainable lifestyle and that's amazing and that's great and you should give yourself props for that um yeah that's pretty much it thank you so much for listening to this episode of successfully sustainable the podcast all about living a more attainable maintainable sustainable lifestyle and yeah remember to like and subscribe and share and rate us and do all those things depending on the platform you're on yeah 10 out of 10 5 out of 5 give us a like subscribe um and remember to hold yourself to a standard of improvement and not perfection remember to use the code success sustain 15 for 15 percent off all products on etherherbalistapothecary.com and a huge thanks to ether once again for supporting the show Thank you for listening to this episode of Successfully Sustainable. We'll see you again next Monday.